gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself. I'm your host, Jake Letizia, and this is the podcast where I look into a camera and I talk to myself. How you doing? How's it going? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing good, dude. I'm doing fucking good, dude. Aside from my hands being dry from the cold, dude. Aside from my knuckles cracking a little bit with some blood. I'm doing great, dude. I'm doing maybe the best I could possibly be. This past week has been a hell of a week, man. It's been a fun week. It's been a delight to the ears this week. It's been a delight to the eyes, bro. Dude, I... let's just get into it, dude. Let's immediately talk about what, what everyone's been talking about. What what anyone who uh what anyone who is anybody is talking about right now. Not everybody, dude. Not everybody. Some people you, you bring up certain rap beefs, you bring up certain rap artists, and they tune the fuck out. They go, I don't give a shit about any of this. And you go, all right, well, you're no fun. <laughs> Dude, it's fine if you don't care about Kendrick or Drake or the new Kendrick album. It's fine if you don't care about any of that stuff. But but here's a newsflash for you. You're less fun than everybody else, dude. If when I say the name Kendrick Lamar and Drake and New Info, when I say that sentence together, when I say all of those things in unison, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, New Info, if you respond to that by being like, please don't tell me about it, you're not that fun. (coughs) At least in my opinion. Anyway, Friday, dude, this past Friday, I'm chilling. I'm hung over as shit because I went to a bar the night before. I fucking straight up time traveled the night before. What a great, what a beautiful Thursday into Friday I had. Literally Thursday night, a bartender was bar backing or not bar backing was bartending at, at one at my favorite bar, right? This is the bartender that got me to start going to this bar. She, she just happened She's retired, and yet she came back this beautiful Thursday to just bartend. So I was like, oh, I definitely have to go. This woman is the reason I started going to th- to this bar, which I love, and she doesn't work anymore. I'm there. So I go. I invite two beautiful friends to come hang out. We all hang out. We have a beautiful night. I drink way too fucking much. I, w- I wake up hungover as shit. A- a- another friend of mine goes, hey, man, you want to get on Discord? I go, sure, dude. It's like 2 p.m., okay? You want to go on Discord? I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. I go on Discord. I'm gaming, dude. I'm playing Stalker 2, which has been fun as shit, buggy as hell, and I'm playing it like a like a poor piece of shit on the Xbox Series S. I'm playing, at, I'm playing it at 30 frames per shitty second, but you know what? I'm playing. I'm having fun in spite of it all, dude. Listen, would I prefer for it not to be 142 gigabytes and run at 30 FPS? Sure. But uh, there's a lot of things I wish for, dude. I I also wish I had a a $5,000 PC to play it at 120 frames per second. But you know what? We, we, We are dealt a certain hand and we play the cards as they are, dude. And my cards say I have an Xbox Series S and I'm enjoying Stalker 2 in spite of it being probably the worst way you can play it. That's how fun the game is. It's buggy as hell. It's rough. I'm playing it in the worst possible way you could be playing it. Still having a good time, dude. So I'm doing that, playing Stalker 2, talking to my friend, and all of a sudden, there's there's something that pops up in my YouTube notifications. I click on it. Oh, shit, it's Kendrick Lamar, GNX. Oh, fuck, is this a new Kendrick song? What is this, dude? I loved Watch the Party Die. I got to see what this fucking Kendrick song is all about. I hope GNX, I mean, is it a single from the album? Is this, is it a snippet of what's to come? <coughs> Let's see. We all expect an album. Let's see what this is. Watch the minute long thing. He's barring it up. He sounds fucking beautiful. And then it says GNX at the end real quick. And I'm like, okay, that must be the album. GNX. I wonder when it's coming out. Everyone in the comments. Ooh, hell yeah, dude. Can't wait for the album. Let's see when it's coming out. 
I go, I start to talk to my friend on chat. I'm like, wow, yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. I guess an album's coming. I wonder when it's going to come out. I wonder if it's going to come out before. You think it's going to come out before the Super Bowl? Uh, I don't know, man. I think it might come out after or on the Super Bowl. Honestly, it's either before or on the Super Bowl is what my friend's saying. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I think he's going to drop it right during the performance it's going to drop. Another friend comes into the Discord. He goes, hey, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about, but the album's out. I go, what? I go, huh? He goes, the album is out, dude. GNX is out. And my friend is a notable liar, dude. He lies all the time, dude. He thinks it's funny to just say wild shit that no one be- that no one believes at this point. He's the boy who cried wolf, dude. He's the boy who cried the album just came out. You know what I'm saying? So we don't believe him because he's a liar. And and he's like, no, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I go to Spotify. The album's out, dude. I go, hey, I love you guys. I would love to talk to you, but I have to listen to this. I leave. I listen to the album front to back. Used to wear my roly chain proud. Irony. I think my hard work let little Wayne down. Whatever, though. Bro. Bro. Mustard! Dude. Dude. What are we doing? What are we doing, dude? Kendrick does not give a fuck anymore, huh? That man that doesn't care. That 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 whole album is you going, oh, he doesn't give a fuck, dude. He is he is it's the most self-actualized, confident man I've ever seen. I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. I talked about on the other episode of the podcast bars that are awesome because it just comes from a, a a confident ass rapper. You get you the, the bars you get from confident rappers are silly and stupid, but they're amazing, dude. Dude, him screaming, dude. I thought, I thought, him going wop 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 dot fuck him up wop 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 wop. I'm gonna do my stuff. I thought that was the silliest and most confident I would get from him in a while. Little did I know he'd be screaming mustard for eight bars, dude. He'd be screaming mustard like a psychopath, and it sounds good, dude. Little did I know he'd go beep bop boop bop 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 bow. The type I'm shit on you wouldn't understand. Or beep bop bam. I didn't know he'd go beep bop beep bop beep bop bam. The type of sh- uh, the type of shit I'm on, you wouldn't understand. I had no idea he would be doing that kind of shit, dude. I thought I thought wop 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 was confident. Beep bop bam, dude. What they talking about? They talking about nothing, dude. Turn his TV off. Turn his TV off. Simple, hard hitting. Go fuck yourself music. Oh man, it's so good, dude. It's so good. And here's the thing. There are going to be, like, lots of degrees of reaction to this album. Okay? There already have been varying degrees of reaction. Some people say it's amazing. Some people say it's mid. Listen. Is it the greatest album he's ever put out? I I don't think so. I still think T-Pab is his best album. But is it is it arguably one of his best albums? One thousand percent, dude. If you told me GNX is your favorite Kendrick album, it's impossible for me to argue against it. Because, listen, "To Pimp a Butterfly" is my favorite album of his. Just conceptually, lyrically, artistically, it's incredible. But that album, like, I don't. I'm not. If I'm replaying songs from it. Like, there's certain songs that I like. I'm not replaying that often. There's certain songs that, like, I like artistically, but maybe not musically. Like, I, I don't want to listen to them that often. GNX. There are some people who they, they don't like certain songs in the album. Me, personally, there are zero skips, dude. It's a 100% hit record. For every song. Every song I listen to on that album. Even the shit that I don't really like. Like when Kendrick starts doing. Uh, his radio. His radio hits. Where it's it's romantic. And he's singing to women. And 
sometimes those are very hit or miss for me personally. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I appreciate them and I, and I appreciate them as good, but like I, that's not my type of music. This fucking album, Luther came on. I was like, this shit slaps, dude. I fucking like this song. I've been listening to the album, and every time I listen to it, I'm expecting myself to skip over songs to be like, well, I've heard that before. I really want to get to this one. No, dude. Every time I listen to it, I get front to back without even realizing, and I want to listen to it again, dude. Whacked Out Murals is is one of the best songs he's ever made. And if you're out there right now saying, like, it's mid, it's a mid-pack... I don't know who you're lying to, but we don't believe you. <laughs> if you're out there going GNX is not a good album, you're, it's a hollow lie. It's a lie that goes out into the air, and then we all go, oh, that's some bullshit, and it falls back to the ground and, and, and settles into some dog shit on the street corner. Like, no one's no one's listening to you, dude. Dude, we had GNX come out, and then we had the double whammy of GNX coming out, and then Drake suing UMG and fully telling the world, I lost, and I want some money for it. There's a lot of discussion around around the whole UMG thing. A lot, there's some people being like, dude, there's some people trying to hold on to some cope by being like well well Drake is tr- is Drake is trying to he's trying to fight for the people a little, little bit even if he's not meaning to even if he's being selfish the the lawsuits uh or he's filing uh uh I forget the name of it but he's filing something that could become a lawsuit um if there's basis for it like him doing that could open up the music industry to stop doing payola and stop having people, you know, stop having record labels like only inflate the numbers of huge artists. You know, it might even the playing field a little bit. Dude, regardless of the good that might, could come out of it, potentially Drake is doing it. Drake is going, dude. <laughs> people are also like, because allegedly UMG was like, oh, uh, we didn't do anything wrong. To, to They were saying to Drake and his lawyers, we didn't do anything wrong. If you want to sue Kendrick, sure. We'll even we'll even help you. And dude, for, for certain, Drake was like, yeah, maybe I'll do that, bro. And then, uh, that's my Drake, dude. It's really good, right? Yeah, maybe I'll do that, bro. Dude, for whatever reason, Drake sounds like a townie to me. He just sounds like a dude... Who never left home? Who's just like, ah ha ha ha, yo, can I bum a cig, bro? To me, that's what Drake is. Also, townies fuck underage girls all the time. So, like, Drake is a townie at heart, bro. He grooms, he groom, he grooms children. He ta- he has a stu- he has a weird voice. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. he's always doing a voice, dude. Townies do that too, bro. Every time you see a townie, you're like, dude, you're talking in an accent that doesn't exist for this town. What is that, dude? There's a townie accent. And it's just a guy being like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Yo, dude, let me bomb his sick, bro. You're like, that's not a voice that people have, dude. That's a voice that you and the people who never left town have for some reason. Something about living in your parents' house makes you fucking talk like that. I don't know what it is. And no disrespect to being a townie, bro. Just, if you're a townie, don't, don't fuck kids, dude. <laughs> There's a correlation between townies and having sex with kids. I don't know if it's because you still live by your old high school and, and just in your brain, you're like, that's the only place to meet girls. It's not, dude. That's the place to meet girls if you're the same age, dude. If you're not, get out of there, dude. Townies go, t- dude. It's the th- it's the thirty year old dude who's at the fucking house party that high schoolers are having. That's Drake. <laughs> and dude, townies like Drake's music, bro. Dude, it it all connects. That's true. I didn't think about that. Townies love Drake's music. If you go to your hometown right now, dude, and you and you run into a guy from your high school, he wants to borrow a cigarette from you. He wants to bum a cig. First of all, you're seeing him at the mobile station. You're seeing him at a gas station. He wants to bum a cig from you. 
He wants to catch up, but only he wants to talk about shit that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, he's going to say that he's built different. He's going to talk about uh, a girl he's trying to fuck, and she, w and she will be 18 or 17. And, and he will get in his car. You'll be at the mobile station. You guys will both get in your cars. If you leave your window open, you'll start hearing, started from the bottom, now you're here in his car. You'll start hearing certified pedophile or lover boy, whatever it's called. You'll start hearing, you'll hear, ha, 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 coming out of his car while he's DMing an underage woman. <laughs> And smoking the cigarette he bummed from you. That's what that's what you get. Anyway, make no mistake, this UMG lawsuit, he would love to go after Kendrick, okay? He would love to not sue UMG and sue Kendrick. But optically, there's no way he can sue Kendrick and not have the whole world go, you're a pussy. Okay? So instead, he's like, you know what? I'll sue UMG, and maybe because it's the big guy, it's, the co I, it's me versus the corporate entity, it's me versus the company, Maybe people will be on my side. Nope. We all see through it. You, you lost. You lost. And you're, and you're yelling at, at, at your dad to give you some money, dude. That's what happened. That's what happened, dude. You and your brother got into a fight and your dad was like, I'm going to stay out of this. But I think your brother is right. And then your brother was right. And everyone agreed with your brother. And now you're like, well, no, I'm right. Give me some money for saying my brother's right. No, dude. He's like, you need to pay me for you not helping me win this bat. That's what he's doing. Dad, you didn't defend me against my brother, even though my brother was right to pick a fight with me. You need to give me some money now because I can't stop crying. That's what it is, dude. That's what it is. How is it not that? How is it not that, dude? It's that. That's what it is, dude. Dude, how do you do that? How do you... who? Who in his uh, camp is is like, yo, this is a good idea, dude. He has to be just like hemorrhaging money. He has to be just like, like, I guess, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, he's admitting defeat. And, and I'll be honest, dude, everything I know about this is from what I've heard from other people. <laughs> So at the end of the day, dude, I, I my opinion could be dismissed on this, but at the same time, I think I'm right, dude. <laughs> Listen, I'm fully just regurgitating what I heard from other podcasts for the most part, but I agree with what they said, and it's also my opinion, so I'm saying it right now. <laughs> Listen, did I wor did I learn the word payola? from multiple YouTubers and podcasters this past week? Yes, but I agree with their sentiment and I'm going to I'm going to add to it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. For me this is a this is maybe his best album ever, GNX. It might be his best album. Or his second best album of all time. For me, it is, dude. For me, the ranking goes, and maybe people will get mad at this, dude. Oh, people will get mad, dude, because de people people got mad at Fantano for giving damn a seven. Dude, here's the problem, dude. I don't think any of his albums are a seven. I think seven was too low for that album. I agree with that. But if I'm looking at the discography of Kendrick, I, I, my, I, damn is not my favorite. I'm going T Pab and then uh, GNX as the top two for me, and then I guess it depends on my mood. But then, then it would probably be Mr. Morale or Damn in third, or it might be Untitled. If we're counting Untitled Unmastered, Untitled Unmastered is third. I fucking love Untitled Unmastered. It's so good. I was re-listening to it. It fucking slaps, dude. 
It's banger after banger. If GNX is is uh, the inverse of that of of what he did with To Pimp a Butterfly, where he releases, where he's releasing the untitled unmastered version first, which is GNX, just all fucking slaps. People, there's some people who who probably think that I'm crazy for saying untitled unmastered is all slaps, dude. They're artistic slaps, dude. Sometimes it's fucking you can have an artistic slap, bro. It's fine. Okay. Shit can be artsy, dude, and you can listen to it more than once. That's a weird thing, too. Let's just... Let's just take... There's a lot of speculation. There's there's speculation about an actual album. Like, like GNX is the mixtape, and there's going to be an actual album coming out. Right? And some of the proof is that the music in the trailer is not, is not, like, is not on the album. And also, there's two GNX cars in in the trailer for the album. So two two GNX cars, two albums, or two ta- two records, whatever. But no matter what, dude. If there's no if the, if this is the only project that comes out from Kendrick until another album, that's totally separate from this. This is still incredible. And people are like, well, it doesn't feel like the album because there's no because it's not as uh, conceptually intense as his other albums. It's like, yeah, but literally on TV off, he goes, he goes, uh, fuck being reasonable. Give the people what they want. Give the people what they want. Let's give them what they want. He made an album full of bangers. It's, it's just, it's just him adding to the conversation and to the, and to the argument of, uh, you think all these motherfuckers are talking shit. They're saying, I only make artsy fartsy shit that puts people to sleep. I'm going to wake everyone the fuck up with this banger after banger after banger of an album. To me, that's the concept. The concept is, fuck you, I'm good at this. That's a good concept. In Damn, he was depressed and in a dark place. In Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, he was coming out of the dark place, accepting his sins, revealing them to the world, putting himself on the cross, crucifying himself for his sins. And this is this is the is the second coming, dude. This is when Jesus comes back, bro. He's fucking reincarnated, dude. Kendrick is reincarnated as a better man. And now he's totally in his element. He feels like a god. And he's ready to fucking set the industry right. That's the concept. The concept is I'm Goku, dude. I'm go I'm Super Saiyan Blue or whatever the fuck. Okay? He's got blue hair right now, dude. His power level is unmatched right now. That's what he's doing. Somebody come fight me because it's fuck everybody now. And Lil Wayne, dude, it's a rumor now. Once again, dude, all this information from the Joe Budden podcast. 100, I mean, from who else, dude? <laughs> but uh, Lil Wayne, allegedly from Joe Budden's mouth, put out a diss. Or he's going to put out a diss. He recorded a diss. If he did, bro, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. I don't know. It's not a good move, dude. I don't know. With Drake, with Drake, Kendrick hates Drake, so it's like fun to see him just be like "fuck you." But with with Lil Wayne, you know, he respects him, so it's gonna be sad. He's gonna be like, like imagine a Meet the Grams version for Lil Wayne. He's gonna be like, "It's so sad that I have to destroy my idol, but I'm gonna take it there. I'm gonna stab you with the Bible." <laughs> It's so sad I have to destroy my idol, but I'm going to take it there. I'm going to stab you with the Bible. He's going to stab Lil Wayne with the Bible, dude. I don't want to see that. He'll do it, dude. He'll fucking do that shit. 100%. He's going to make Lil Wayne look like an idiot, dude. Ah. Uh. Don't do it, man. Just don't do it. His he wasn't even insulting you. He was just being like, yo, that's a bummer that one of my heroes is upset at my accomplishments. He's gonna literally be in the song be like, we could have been on stage together, but now you're gonna die in a hole all alone. I don't know. My I'm losing my, my Kendrick impression's not very good. But you know what I'm saying, dude. 
he's just gonna he's just gonna make Lil Wayne. <sighs> he's gonna be like, now you gotta die with your son. Something like that. I can't do the Kendrick Lamar impression well enough to to create more bars. But he's gonna be like, I killed your son, and now you're gonna join him. He's gonna be like, hey, this is sad because I think you're great at rapping, but at the same time, you you like, what's Lil Wayne gonna say? Like, you wouldn't exist without me, and and then Kendrick will just be like. You, bo- you, yes, you birthed me, you creatively birthed me into the world, and I just took your son out, and now the father's next, dude. We're going to call this patricide. <laughs> He's going to say the word patricide on, on a record attacking you. Oh, don't do that, dude. Don't do it. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's not gonna be. It's not like I'm gonna li- I'm gonna be excited and listen to any song that comes out where Kendrick and another man is battling. But at the same time, I, I like I don't want to. I'd rather see him like go against Ice Cube or something. That'd be fun. Cause Ice Cube was talking a little bit. Like, Ice Cube was like, I don't know. I saw a short or a reel of him. Where he was like being like, I I have the no Vaseline is fucking way better than not like us. Like getting to his ego a little bit, getting prideful, being like, fuck that shit, dude. I'm no Vaseline. I was against every I was against the whole fucking rap group. Kendrick's against one guy, which isn't I don't agree. I mean, I don't know. But also it's, it's a it's a matter of taste and time because no Vaseline. I think it's a good song, but at the same time. To my ear, it's, it's, you know, it's old enough where I'm like, yeah, not like us. I'm, 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 I'm jamming to that, dude. I'm singing every word to that. No Vaseline. I listen to it. I appreciate the quality, but at the same time, I'm like, well, but I'm not of that time or era. So it's not going to hit me the same, you know, in the same way that not like us might not hit. Well, I don't know. Hit him up. Hit, hit me, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Some music's timeless. I don't know. I gotta listen to re- No Vaseline. I gotta re-listen to it. All right, that's the timer for the first half. I'll see you guys in the second half. What's up? I'm back. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. GNX, great album. Lil Wayne, don't do it. And Drake, uh, bye, dude. <laughs> Bye, man. Bye. It was, it was, uh, I don't know. I've never been a big fan of the music. So I would say it was nice knowing him, but like, I don't, I don't really, I don't know him personally and I definitely don't listen to his music that much. So I'm of two minds with Drake. It's like, listen, man, if you're not a pedophile, uh, you know, I don't know. It sounds from what people say that I don't, from what people say who I don't know at all, he sounds like a bad dude. He sounds like he fucking at at the very least sucks a good amount. (laughs) That's the thing too, where people defend him when they're like very on his side. And I'm like, but, but like, he seems like he stinks, dude. At the very least, he seems like an asshole. But not like a fun asshole, like an asshole who, who like would hurt your mom if it made him successful. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? He seems like the type of guy who would like fuck your mom and then kill her if it made him $2 million. Is that too crazy? <laughs> um, What else I got? Um, oh, dude. Okay. Here's another cut. Con- well, this isn't controversial. I feel like what I, j- or, or what I just said wasn't, I feel like me saying the GNX album is great. is not a controversial statement. Although it seems, it seems like to some people it, it is a controversial statement. I don't know. Also, people keep making the argument that like, well, this is a West coast album. It's for West coast people. And by I say people keep making the argument, I mean like maybe one to two people made that argument. Dude, every time you say people keep doing this or everyone's doing this, it means three people. (laughs) You'll be like, yo, I heard that. I heard from like a lot of people that this really fucked up thing is happening. And you'll go, 
who'd you hear it from? You go one podcast that I listen to all the time. <laughs> dude, nobody says it, it, dude. Everybody just means one, one podcaster is telling a million people. That's what everybody is saying. This means <laughs> damn the power, the power of like, of, of very popular podcasts is crazy. Because even in like a small group of friends, right? Even if, okay, so say you got five friends. If two of your friends tell you that a movie sucks, you're going to tell another person, yeah, everyone's been telling me that the movie sucks, but everybody is just the two friends of yours who you trust. So now if you have a podcaster who you trust, okay, and he's talking to a million fucking people who trust him, all of a sudden, dude, He's got a million people saying everybody's saying something because of what he said. But but by proxy, paradoxically, everybody is saying it because one guy said it. <laughs> That's nuts, dude. I, I, I've, I haven't thought about it in that exact terms yet until this very moment. And that's fucking nuts. If this, if, the, if, if, if more than 10 people listen to this, and I said something crazy and people trusted me, then then all of a sudden everybody would be saying everybody's saying it and they'd be correct even though it's one guy who said it made a million people say it. That's fucking nuts, dude. Joe Rogan must... I wonder if Joe Rogan's got a hard time with that. I wonder if he ponders that sometimes. That's all I would be thinking about all the time if I was him. It's like, fuck, man. Anything I say, a lot of people believe... Even if I say something dumb as hell, dude. I'm probably better off if 10 people listen to this. <laughs> that's that's a lot of power, dude. That's a lot of power. If I had a podcast that big, I probably would constantly be saying like... I mean, he does that. Well, he used to do it more. He used to more often be like... By the way, I'm, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't know how often he does that now. I would be doing that constantly. 24-7, I'd be like, bro, by the way, I'm fucking stupid, dude. I do that now and no one listens to this thing. Like me talking all that shit about GNX. I'm just a guy talking shit. I'm doing that as, as, uh, as is my right to just be a person who talks shit. Just be a person who goes, I think I feel this very strongly. But if somebody who is more, um, if somebody who's more of an expert in the field than me comes along and is like, well, it's actually this. I'm like, yeah, all right. Well, you're the, I'm going to defer to the next. I always defer to an expert. I talk a lot of nonsense until someone who knows something says something to me. And then I go, all right, well, maybe I'll shift what I think. <laughs> There's always someone smarter than you, dude. And it's, 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 it's your job to, to make sure, you know, when someone's smarter than you and to, and to take in what the smarter person says. If you're out there just thinking like, nah, everything I think and believe is correct and no one can change my mind. You need to, you need to f fix your life, dude. You need to calm down. You ever argue with dude? There's a line with, there's a fine line with that. I feel like sometimes people think I am a person who I like, I, cause I am an argumentative person. I'm a person who like will believe strongly in something that I think, but I, when I enter an argument being like, I would love for you to change my mind and I will argue with you for a long time. Not because I necessarily think your point is even bad. It's just, I want you to believe in your point enough to make me uh, like think it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you argue with somebody and they barely care about what they're arguing for. And what they're arguing for might actually be good and worth arguing, but the person gives so little of a shit that, that you don't want to believe them. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can't put up with a friendly back and forth with me, uh, like, your opinions won't stand, uh, like, 
It, it, the, your your opinions aren't real. Am I making any fucking sense? <laughs> if what you believe cannot be held under kind scrutiny, uh, then it. I would argue that you don't believe those things at all. They're just. They're. They're just. You know. They're things that go in and out of your head. If you strongly believe in something, then you can argue with a friend. And you you can push back and forth and you can like to me when somebody comes to me with with something they believe, I I try and argue with them so they strengthen that belief. My friends, my best friends, I like to argue with them. It's a give and take though. I mean, you can't you got to gauge your... Some friendships are not... That's not the relationship. You can't argue too much with them. Some people don't like to argue. Some people like... Stresses them the fuck out. I like it, dude. I don't know. I had an idea to... to, to you know... Maybe I'll start doing that. Start doing videos where I'm just arguing with people. It's just... we. It's just like a random... A thing that like... I know... A friend greatly disagrees with, with me on. And we just... Fucking battle it out, dude. Maybe maybe I'll just start doing guests from that perspective from now on. Like I had Simon on, and I loved how much we were just arguing about shit. Because he, he's a guy who I love arguing with him. Because his opinion is always so different from mine, and he believes it so strongly. But then, like, I'll turn him around on an idea. And he'll do the same with me. You always want to enter an argument with somebody who will aggressive... Who, you want to argue with somebody who you think will never let go of their belief but but at the end of all of it will actually change their mind i want somebody who fights for what they think but will change their mind if they hear a better argument but anyway i that was a huge tangent what i wanted to get into was a very controversial thing which is i finished game of thrones dude I finished Game of Thrones, and I thought the end was good. <laughs> oh, which is so fun to say, dude. It's so fun to say. It's so fun to say something that, like, doesn't matter at all and doesn't mean anything and should elicit no real aggressive reaction, and yet you say it and people viscerally get angry. It's so fun to say an opinion on something that shouldn't get anyone's blood pressure up at all. And yet it might give somebody a heart attack. Like I, I, I like people were saying to me, it's brave of me to say that I like the ending of, 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 of a TV show. Do you understand how fucking fucked up some people are? Do you understand how fucking like how much people need to calm down? That someone told me it was brave for me to tell my opinion on a TV show, dude. If you lose friendships over what TV shows you disagree on with your friend, you're a fucking weird guy. <laughs> you're weird, dude. If my friend came to me and said the Sopranos sucked, I would argue with him aggressively about why he's wrong. But if he gave me a good reason on why he didn't like it, I wouldn't matter to me. It doesn't matter, dude. I like it. Dude, my girlfriend hates the Batman. You think I give a shit? No, dude. The Batman was awesome. I love that movie. She doesn't like it. Who cares, dude? That's her prerogative. People will straight up end the relationship. They'll end the friendship because, because, because somebody, because they're, because somebody doesn't like the Barbie movie. <laughs> there are people out there who are like, my boyfriend doesn't like the Barbie movie. I fucking hate him now. My girlfriend doesn't like the Sopranos. She's, I can't be with her. What?
I don't know. That's more final straw kind of shit. Hopefully that's more final straw kind of shit. I feel like if somebody is, is tells you that they're breaking up with their partner because they don't like it, the TV show they like, it's it's that's the, the final straw in a bunch of things that already suck, you know? Like, I've, I've broken up with people or stopped seeing people over little things, but the little things were... were the little thing was the hundredth in 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 a list of garbage. <laughs> when people talk about red flags, it's it's not one red flag that makes you hate somebody. It's 48, you know? Red flags are fine. Red flag just means something that you're not fully on board with. But everyone's got red flags. Everyone's got something where you're like, I don't agree with that. But it's fine. It's a, it's 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 when somebody you go into somebody's room and they have like 50, 58 flags on their wall being like, aren't these cool? That's when it's no good, dude. <laughs> if somebody has 57 flags on display and they're and they're like, that's sick, though, right? That's when you got to bow the fuck out. But if somebody says Tony Soprano bothers them. Honestly, you should just be like, fair enough. I see people argue shit and I'm like, you got to let go of that argument, dude. It doesn't matter. I understand you've been with your girlfriend for nine years, but like, let let her think McDonald's stinks. <laughs> Listen, it strengthens the relationship if you can eat a double quarter pounder together, right? I'm going to eat a double quarter pounder with my girlfriend tonight. She's going to eat a filet of fish, and it's going to make me be vet, like more in love with her than I already am. But at the same time, if she's like, hey, I don't care. You can have a double quarter pounder. I'm going to eat a salad. I still love you. That's fine too, dude. You'll be less in love, but you, you'll it's still enough love. <laughs> Anyway, Game of Thrones ending was good, dude. I get it. I get why people don't like it, but at the same time, I don't know, dude. It's funny. The final season of the show, there's a there's like people... I remember when the final season of the show was happening because I hadn't watched the show at all. I had watched two episodes. I had watched the first episode. Well, actually, in retrospect, when I was re-watching it, I realized, like, oh, I actually watched, like, four episodes. I think I watched until... Spoilers, but come on. It's been out for fucking ever. I watched up until Ned Stark, like right, like Ned Stark dying was the episode I didn't watch. I watched up until right before that happened. And I remember my, I was like, oh, I was like any, I heard something crazy happens or no, no, no. That's what it was. It was spoiled for me that he dies. And I said to my brother, I was like, yo, they kill, they kill him. They kill Baromir. And my brother was like, yeah, I go, that's fucking stupid. I, I don't want to watch it now. <laughs> I was one of those guys. I was like, he, I mean, he's the guy I'm watching the show for. Like, he, they killed him. He's my favorite guy, dude. And I'll and I'll be honest, at that stage of the show, there's not many likable people in the fucking show. I mean, Jon Snow takes a minute for you to really be like, I like this dude. For a, for a minute, he's really annoying. And he's and that's the point, dude. He's he's a petulant kid. He's disobedient. He's, you know, he's got to learn how to be a good, smart leader. And he does over time. And by the end of the show, you're like, this guy's the shit. But in the beginning of the show, you're like, he's kind of annoying me, bro. Just fucking do the right thing already. But I get it. He's young. He's got to figure it out. But what I'm saying is I remember watching. I had watched that and I had seen the Hodor episode. And the Hodor episode, I so my friend at the time, she watched uh, uh, Game of Thrones every Sunday, and it was that season where the where Hold the Door was revealed, and uh, she w she liked seeing, she liked watching the epi the new episodes. That's how popular this fucking show was. They were they would air new episodes at bars, and it was at Durden's. They would air. They, there was this. There, I don't think it exists anymore, but there was this bar called Durden's. Uh, after Tyler Durden from Fight Club. And um, they would show uh, Game of Thrones there every Sunday when they aired the episodes. 
Terrible bar, by the way. Terrible bar. We went there on a Friday. Since we liked it on the Sunday and the bartender on the Sunday was cool, we went on a Friday one time. Nightmare bar. Nightmare bar, dude. Bunch of high school kids, dude. I, I understand why they shut down. It's because they didn't ID anyone, dude. What a disturbing place, if I'm being honest. Me, me and her and another friend went there on a Friday night, and I watched... I watched the bartender give probably like 18 year old girls shots. And he was like 50 dude. <laughs> and I was like, bro, you should be turning them away, dude. This is weird. Anyway, that happened. And then also we ordered grilled cheeses and they came back just no grilled, just bread and cheese. And it took like an hour and a half to get, bread and cheese dude anyway i get why that bar closed down it was a nefarious place but we used to watch game of thrones on sundays or at least i went one time she would go every sunday and uh i watched the hold the door episode out of context and i i remember watching it and everyone around me was like oh my god this is this is insane and i sat there going this seems pretty fucking stupid <laughs> and I'll be honest, even in context, the hold the door shit was pretty fucking stupid, dude. And by that time in the show, they kind of abandoned Bran. Here's the thing about the show, dude. I think it ends well. And... <sighs> Part of the reason why I think the show ends well and fine is because I think the whole show stupid shit happens like the show is like 70 percent good 30 percent some dumb shit happens and so towards the end of the show i don't think that percentage changed at all so by the end of the show i'm like okay they kept to their percentages of stupid shit to cool shit i'm fine with what happens i get it brand becoming king was not great dude they could have it wasn't great, but it makes sense. It makes sense in the show, dude. The whole show is is emotional, uh, selfish kings and queens ruining the world and wielding power power uh, irresponsibly. Who better to rule and hold power than somebody who is who is not emotional? who is completely rational, who has no more emotions, who is just cl completely at peace with the world and knows all our history. He knows exactly what to do and what not to do and who to appoint and who to listen to. He's all seeing and all knowing. Wouldn't you make that guy king? You would. But I understand the human reaction to that of like, besides having a bunch of knowledge, this guy hasn't done any cool shit. And on top of he hasn't done any cool shit, the actor, the actor's choices for Bran were not, uh, had, they lacked Riz, dude. Bran kind of disappears from the show and then reappears and you're like, every time you see him on screen, you're as bothered with him as the people around him. Everyone around him is like, yo, you're weird now. And you also are like, you're weird now. And here's the thing. Becoming the Three-Eyed Raven doesn't remove your Riz because the dude who was the Three-Eyed Raven before him, if that guy was appointed king, you'd be like, hell yeah, dude. This guy has wisdom. He talks with a stern voice. He seems like he knows what's up. For whatever reason, Bran has no emotion and, kind of, and no Riz, and he's boring. No one wants a boring king. But at the same time, logically, it makes sense, dude, to pick Bran. I agree they should have built towards it a little bit. But that last episode getting a four... I saw the IMDb score. It's a four out of ten. Listen, I think the brand shit hits... Knocks that shit down to a seven. Uh, that was a good dude. Everyone had a great ending. The final image of that show is... Is, is, is Jon Snow walking out into the north with the wildlings. The gate closing behind him. He's joining the free folk and becoming truly free himself in honor and in memory of the one woman he loved, who he lost 
because of all this bullshit, because of all this classism, because of all of this politics and all of this infighting. The woman he loved died. And so he finally gets to to do what he wanted to do in the first... Dude, anybody who was like, John should have been king, I don't agree with you, bro. Because the whole show, he keeps going, I don't want it! I just want to be part of the Night Watch! I don't want to be king! I don't want to! And they keep forcing him to take power, they keep forcing him to do shit. And I understand, I understand people are like, well, just force him to be king now. But it's like, that's not a happy ending for him. And that, I think that's where my confusion comes in because people seem to be upset because they didn't get the endings they want because they wanted happier endings for people. But I think people got like as happy of an ending as they could for a show where the worst thing happens all the time. Like the worst case scenario always happens. Like people are like Sansa becoming queen. What That was stupid. Why is that stupid, dude? In the last three seasons, they prove that she can hold her own. She fucking kills Ramsey, dude. She politics her way up. She kills that fucking weirdo, dude. What's that guy's name? The creepy guy who's trying to fuck her the whole show. Him, Her and Arya fucking body that guy. She she runs Winterfell really she 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 basically runs Winterfell while John is gone. People respect her. They they fucking I don't know, dude. I'm confused. When when that show was on and people started hating the fuck out of it, I remember consciously being like, I'm glad I haven't seen this whole show because I feel like if I was watching it right now, I would be too influenced by what other people think. Like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people have been captured by the moment with that show. I also didn't have the context of, and this is another thing that could really influence how you feel about a thing or how you think about a show when you're watching it. It can, it can build in preconceived notions that I don't think that I think maybe aren't really there, but because you are mad, you start thinking it like. They were supposed to do three more seasons of the show. And then the creators got asked to do a Star Wars movie. And they were like, fuck it, let's do two seasons. And they're also short seasons. So I can see myself, if I was a huge fan of that show, and I got promised three more full seasons, and then I got two short seasons, I'd be pretty fucking annoyed too. I'd be like, what the fuck? And so you go in watching it being like, I'm already mad. You're going to get more mad, dude. If it's not perfect, you're going to be angry. You already are like, this is shorter than it should. Be. Like, you've already put in the viewer's head, this is shorter than you guys planned for it to be. So I'm going to focus on the fact that this is less show than you promised. And I'm going to focus on how quickly things are happening. And I'm going to be angry about, like, you guys are rushing shit. I binged the whole thing, so there was no rush to me. <laughs> As a person who binged the entire show in like two months, I think, I, I didn't feel like anything was rushed. But that's because, you know, it's the difference of waiting every week to watch a show versus watching all of it all at once. Also, I think I think the gaps in seeing episodes of the show make you forget the shit people go through and, and the writing that they're building towards like Daenerys. I think they fully, I think they built very well towards her burning down the city. I thought it was great. That episode, when I was watching it, I was like, I hope the bells ring. And then she goes, I don't care that they surrendered. I'm killing everybody. Like I thought Daenerys was the Walter White of the show. I thought she was a villain for a while. I will I will say that like I agree that like in the last season she kind of like ratchets up her evilness and the way she just behaves like the way she acts as an actor she a starts acting real evil which I didn't think it needed because for me Daenerys was always like saying things that were good but the way you I received them were like oh she's evil she thinks she's righteous but what she's doing is wrong 
you know, just because she's murdering people for a good cause doesn't mean doesn't mean the violent murder is justified, you know? Anyway, I thought Game of Thrones was good. <laughs> if you don't, tell me why. Um, but yeah, GNX was good. Game of Thrones is good. Uh, the timer just went for the for the camera. Or the timer just went on my phone, so the camera's about to go out. Um, this was very fun. Thank you for listening. Uh, just always remember that uh, everything I say is kind of uh, coming from the, the brain of somebody who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, if you disagree with me at all, like tell me why, dude. I love it. I love the discussion. I love that. I love a uh, I love a uh, friendly argument. So uh yeah, dude. I hope you had some fun. Thank you so much for listening. Uh I'm going to go eat some McDonald's. I love you guys and I'll see you next week. Jake, you're an idiot. Jake.